Time for a checkup on this thing. Welcome back to the laboratory. Sorry there haven't been many videos this winter, and I probably haven't been overly enthusiastic in the last few, but the universe hasn't been kind to me lately in a bunch of different ways. One of those ways is the nightmare behind me. When I first built the street engine that's in there right now, for over a year, it never leaked a drop of anything. Now I can't get it to not leak, no matter what I do. And the leaks are anything but obvious, just to add to the torture. Anyway, today we're going to focus on inspection, ideally to find any other problems before they become really big problems. We're going to check the plugs, we're going to borescope the cylinders, and try and get underneath the intake manifold in an effort to try and find our missing coolant. We're going to do a leak down test, which honestly should be a routine test for any race engine. And while we're in the neighborhood, we're going to check the valve springs, which again should be a routine test for any race engine, especially one with really tight piston to valve clearance like I've got with the cam that I'm running in this thing. First things first, let's look at the spark plugs. Here's what the plugs look like, and a cursory inspection looks like there's nothing to be worried about here. Using a spark plug viewer, I can look much deeper down into the electrode too, and again, found no problems. With the cam that I'm running, this is what I expect the plugs to look like, so we're going to call that one a win. All right, we're going to start with our inspection camera. And right now the engine is set for cylinder number one at top dead center and it's done that way on purpose because I pulled the distributor out and this way I can put the distributor back in and it's going to be in the right place. But we're looking for our missing antifreeze and we're going to scope all of the cylinders first before we start rotating the engine to see if any cylinder has got a whole bunch of antifreeze in it. And while cylinder number one with its piston at top dead center, there's not going to be a lot that we can see with the scope. Um, we're going to look more for the cylinders that are at bottom dead center right now. So this engine has a firing order of 13726548. So following one, cylinder number three is going to be 90 degrees off. Cylinder number seven is going to be 180 degrees off top dead center. So cylinder number seven we're going to start with knowing the piston is all the way at bottom dead center. Uh, so 13726 is going to be at top dead center, 5, and then 4 is also going to be at bottom dead center. So we're going to check cylinder 7 and cylinder 4 first and see what it's like with those pistons at bottom dead center. Uh, and then we'll have a look in cylinder number 1 and cylinder number 6 that are both at top dead center, and then all of the rest of the cylinders, uh, the piston's about halfway up. Uh, so we'll scope all of that stuff first, see if we can find our missing antifreeze and you know see if there's any other horror shows going on in the cylinders uh, and then we'll start our leak down and valve spring test um, and we'll go cylinder by cylinder and we'll have to rotate the engine uh, to do those so let's start um, I don't know let's start with cylinder number seven first all right hopefully you can see what's going on on the monitor it's not the highest resolution inspection camera but it was affordable so it's what we've got and that's what we're going to use. And I'm just fighting with the header here to try and get the inspection camera in the hole. So, okay, so there you can see going in through the spark plug hole, which the camera barely fits through the hole. So unfortunately, it's not going to give me a lot of articulation in the cylinder, but I can see the piston all the way down at bottom dead center. And it doesn't look like there's any antifreeze, at least there's not any significant amount of antifreeze that I can see in that cylinder, so that's good news. Let's see what we can find in cylinder number four.
so again we can barely get this thing through the spark plug hole we can barely see the top of the cylinder up the top of the piston way down there it's it's dim but I can see it here I'm not sure if you can see it on camera but again we've got a clean cylinder there's no uh, no antifreeze there so let's check in number three which will be 90 degrees down so the piston will be closer so we can see that and again cylinder looks dry let's look number two again a piston is 90 degrees off so it's a lot closer the cylinder looks dry let's check number one while we're here if I can articulate this thing it's flexible but it's really stiff okay and we can see the piston is right at the top here for cylinder number one and that one's dry too so we'll go and do the other three cylinders on the other bank off camera uh, I'm not gonna bore you with uh, with all of that but so far everything looks pretty good and the mystery continues where did our missing antifreeze go I drain the oil and it's not in there so if it's not in the cylinders and if it's not in the oil pan it's not in the red so I don't know where it went now that we've scoped cylinders seven and four and then a few other ones for fun, we're gonna start our leak down test on cylinder number one before we start rotating the engine and we'll scope more cylinders along the way once we start rotating the engine too. Since cylinder number one is at top dead center right now, we're gonna check the valve springs since we know the cam lobes are on the base circle with both valves being closed. To check the springs without removing them, we're gonna use this tool, which just fits over the rocker arm and allows us to just pull on this thing and compress the spring and read on the scale here how much force it's taking to open the valve. So what our seat force on that valve spring is going to be. And we can compare back to what our seat force was when we built the engine, when it was all new, to see if any valve springs are losing tension and going soft. If you're not familiar, leak down testing simply pressurizes the cylinder and the gauge tells you what pressure is leaking. More importantly, while the cylinder is under pressure, you can investigate where the cylinder is leaking. For example, listening in the crankcase, and when we say listening, we're going to listen very closely using the stethoscope. But when we pressurize the cylinder, we can listen in the crankcase through like the dipstick tube to see if there's leakage past the piston rings. We can listen in the intake ports to see if there's leakage past the intake valves, and we can listen in the exhaust to see if there's leakage past the exhaust valve. Also, we can listen in the adjacent cylinders to see if there's a head gasket leaking, and we can look for bubbles in the coolant if there's a head gasket and we're leaking air into the coolant. For a healthy engine, you want leakage past the rings and none elsewhere. For my stuff, I wanna see less than 10% leakage with a low tension ring and even less with a standard tension ring. So I'd like to see five to 6% leakage on this engine. Now we'll see, it's been sitting for quite a while. It's probably a little bit of corrosion built up inside there. Uh, we'll, see what it's, and we'll see what it's going to end up being. But the last time I leaked it, we were like five to 6% uh, across the board and it was only leaking past the ring. So that's what I wanna see uh, again. Now, since the rings float a bit in the ring lands on the pistons, I like to pressurize the cylinder with the piston about 10 degrees before top dead center and then crank in those last 10 degrees, get the, get the piston up to top dead center and it seats those rings and it tightens up the ring leakage. I find if you do it this way, it gives you more consistent readings. With the upper intake manifold off, I've taped off the lower intake to keep things from falling in there, but I've gone and I've poked little holes in all of the ports, so when the cylinders are pressurized, if we do have some leakage past the intake valves, we've got those little holes for the air to escape and for us to listen to with the stethoscope. For a leak down test, first thing we're going to do is we're going to install this hose into the cylinder. So starting at cylinder number one, And this thing has just got O-rings on it, so it's gonna seal tight in the spark plug hole. Okay, so we've got that. Then we're gonna connect our air supply to our flow valve, our leakage valve. Make sure that the regulator's backed all the way off. Then we need to set 
our gauge to our set point at zero, and we need to tap this gauge because it sticks a little bit. Okay, so we've got a zero setting on there. Once we've got that set to zero, then with the quick disconnect on here, we can connect cylinder pressure. And then, again, we're gonna crank in our last 10 degrees and that puts us to top dead center and I don't know if you can see this on the camera it's pretty far away but we're at about seven seven percent so we'll take our stethoscope I can never say that word right and we're gonna listen and there's no intake valve leakage. We're going to listen in the exhaust header. And that's quiet as well, so there's no exhaust valve leakage. We're going to listen in the cylinder next door, and there's nothing there. And then we can listen in the crankcase. Let's actually pull the dipstick and listen in, in the dipstick tube. and we can hear a little bit of air leaking there. So it looks like it's all going past the rings, which is what we want. So that's a good result. So we'll crank the engine 90 degrees. We'll go to the next cylinder in the firing order. We'll do the same thing for leakage and we'll go through the firing order for all eight cylinders doing the same thing. Uh, but while we're on cylinder number one still, we can stop this now. We're gonna measure the valve spring force. So using our valve spring tool, we'll set it up on the intake valve here first, and we'll pull until, make sure this thing's on here right, there we go. We'll pull until the valve starts to open, and it looks like Looks like we've got about 130 pounds there, which is good because that's what it was when it was new. I remember that. We'll check the exhaust and again, we'll make sure this thing's on here right and give it a few good yanks to loosen everything up. And the exhaust is about, looks like we're about the same, about 120 or so. So that's good. Now, valve spring forces and leak down test results are measurements, and we need to write them down somewhere. For any race car or a combination street slash race car, you should have a logbook for important info. It can be as simple as a journal like this one I keep around the shop, or in my case, I've got a binder full of stuff, and I've created custom specific forms for, for example, my cylinder leakage test results, and my valve spring test results. So all the measurements that we take with the leak down test and the valve spring measurements are all going on these pages, and this all goes into my master logbook so that I can, lo I can log this info and I can watch for trends. So a year from now, I can check the valve spring results and see if any springs are starting to go soft or all of them are starting to go soft and ideally replace the springs before bad things happen. Now, speaking of bad things happening, when I was scoping the cylinders, one of the things that I'm looking for is witness marks between the valves and the pistons. I got really tight piston to valve clearance on this engine, so the valve spring health is critical. If the valve springs start softening, then the chances of floating a valve become great, and if I float a valve, then the valves and the pistons are gonna try and occupy the same point in time and space, and it's not gonna end well. But it leaves marks. You see witness marks of the valves hitting the pistons. So when I was boroscoping, I was looking for witness marks and I didn't see any, so that's good news. Let's hope that all the rest of the cylinders that I haven't checked yet are good as well. All right, at this point, we're gonna rotate the engine 90 degrees. We're gonna move our entire operation from cylinder number one to cylinder number three, which is next in the firing order and then repeat. Um, we're gonna go back and scope the engine again and go from cylinder number three to next in the firing order, cylinder number seven, and then so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna bore you showing you all of that stuff in real time. 
um, probably a good opportunity to time lapse. So let's get after the rest of the cylinders. So the GoPro battery died during the time lapse, but I think it recorded most of it, and you got the idea anyway, so you probably didn't need to see all of it. Um, you might have noticed me fumbling around with cylinder number five. At first it looked like the intake valve was leaking, but maybe there was just a little piece of dirt or something on the seat, so I cleared that out, and then it cleaned up, and it was fine after that. Um, all of the valve spring results uh, were good, so we're happy with that. The leak down results were generally good. There was a couple of cylinders that were a little bit too high. Cylinder number four was 10%. Cylinder number five was 11%, even after I think I cleaned up what was going on on the uh, intake valve seat. Um, but this engine hasn't run for a really long time, so it's entirely possible that there's maybe a little bit of corrosion starting to happen in there. But running it under anger for a little while will hopefully bring those cylinders back. And my experience with these engines, you know, especially with my race engine that I used to have, the leak down results go up and down. Cylinders get worse, they get better. So as you run the thing, uh, things get happier. Sometimes as, the, as you run the engine, the rings rotate, and sometimes the rings will rotate so that they'll align the gaps, and then it'll show a higher leak down. You run it for a while, and the rings rotate the gaps away, and then the cylinder tightens back up again. So these results aren't anything that, uh, that worries me. All of the cylinder inspection looked good. We didn't see any witness marks of valves hitting pistons. We still didn't find our mystery coolant. One of the things that I did off camera was I tried to get the inspection camera underneath the intake um, by going through one of the pushrod holes, but it turns out the inspection camera was too big a diameter. It wouldn't fit through the pushrod hole, so I couldn't see underneath there. So the mystery in where our coolant is going is still a mystery. Uh, I pressurize the system, it loses pressure, and the coolant level is going down in the radiator, but it's not leaking externally anywhere. I can't see it leaking internally anywhere. Um, it's not leaking into the cylinders, it's not leaking into the, into the crankcase, because I would have seen it in the oil when I dumped the oil out, so the mystery continues. I don't know if I should just ignore it at this point, put the engine back together and run it, but stuff like this I can't sleep at night. I need to know what's, uh, what's going on. So I'll scratch my head a little bit longer and try and figure out what's going on with that problem. But otherwise, the rest of our inspection looked good, so we're happy with that. We've got a good, strong engine, other than the weird coolant leak um, issue. So if you've watched this far, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Share with your friends as usual. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll try and do a bit more videos. Hopefully most of my problems are behind me now and I can kind of get into the shop a little bit more often. And hopefully this thing will start cooperating a little bit with me um, more going forward too. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Um, we'll see you on the next one. And remember, be kind and be humble. <coughs> I should have done that off camera. And since cylinder number one, take two. <coughs> before we start rotating the engine. Still not right. What take are we up to now? Four? Since cylinder number one is at top dead center right now, we're also going to check the valve springs since we know... 
Okay, take five. And the gauge uh, tells you if you're not, but when we pressurize the cylinder, we can leak in, again, with our stethoscope, and that sucked. That completely sucked. Edit that part out. You can listen to for, you know, <clears throat> God damn it. I should have a script for this. With the upper intake valve, uh, upper intake valve. All right, to get our leakage. <clears throat> Man, I just can't get anything right today. You should have a log book for more important info. <clears throat> for any race car, yeah, I can't do that. I gotta start all over again. And then we'll just continue doing this to all of the rest and the furnace just fired up. What do I do? Do I talk, to, talk through the furnace? Man, there's script problems from day one. Where's my agent? I'll be in my trailer. Okay, that time I got it. All right. <clears throat> 